Alright, hello everyone and welcome to the run of 32 of the Gozu Cup Asia 5. We are going to see Pacific eSport uh, Club number 2 versus Mighty. Um, so, so far, so good. Mighty, I decided to cast that game because we see Risk, an ex-player from N9, formerly AL, and Chains as well, who is apparently one of the better player of Southeast Asia without a team. Chains uh, have been playing very very well and he is a very very strong force to reckon with. He's a very strong player, he hasn't been playing in any teams but we have to keep an eye out for this guy. And on the other side Pacific Esport Club 2. Pacific having two teams and we are going to jump straight into this picks and ban with a Nyx ban from Pacific on the dark side. And uh, what is Mighty gonna answer? Is it gonna be the uh, usual bad rider? And yes, it is. So, for those who just joining us today, um, you know, you pretty much know the bands already. Uh, it's always going to be the Nyx, uh, the uh, bad rider, maybe the Darkseer, maybe the Magnus, uh, maybe the Keeper of the Light. And it's very rare that those heroes actually make it through the first banning phase. And if they are going through the first banning phase, they just get insipicked. Almost all the time. And another hero that is very often picked nowadays is the Rubik or the Shadow Demon, as well as the Nex and the Lone Druid. Um, we may see some other heroes going in, like the Silencer, who just made it into the Captain's Mode. But usually, Southeast Asian teams, they are um, less creative, and they are more about copying the other's style and trying to find something rather safe. And um, Southeast Asian scene, after casting a lot of that, I must say, right now, the gameplay is rather still. It's kind of like three months ago Dota. So, I I wish I can have a surprise here, casting this Mighty versus Pacific Esport. I'm just going to call them Pacific, because uh, Pacific Esport Club is just way too long. So, Pacific versus Mighty, just remember that it's Pacific 2. Uh, and Magnus is gonna get banned, and that's gonna be a Queen of Pain ban for Mighty. So this is a ban we don't often see. Uh, Queen of Pain is one of the heroes that is favored by Pinoy teams. They just love their Queen of Pain. Another hero that uh, the Pinoys have trademarked is the Puck. So Queen of Pain and Puck, two heroes that Pacific, uh, that the South Asian teams really love. And Keeper of the Light is gonna be the pick here. So do, so we see Mighty just giving away the PL, or do we see them snatching it away? It's gonna be a wisp. So Mighty going in for some EU uh, B EU build because that is something that uh, Southeast Asia doesn't see a whole lot. But recently, uh, we have seen a lot more. Um, I mean, we have seen in the last three GMPGL, which are the qualifiers for GST tournament, uh, a wisp pick. And I think it was in the finals Five as well. So. Remaining. Southeast Asian teams starting to catch up with the European scene in terms of Wisp play, it seems. Uh, they do see the power of the Wisp and they are going to try and experiment with it now. Wisp is a hero that is not very simple to play, it needs a lot of coordination. That means if you are, well, if you are a support player, that doesn't necessarily mean you're a good Wisp player. It's gonna be the Wisp Chaos Knight, so Wisp CK, one of the oldest combo in the book against Keeper of Light. Probably PL, I would say. I'm not really sure since they have a, they have a Wisp Chaos Knight. Uh, Keeper of Light will have to be very careful because Ke Keeper of the Light is one of the heroes, support heroes, who can go and defend the tower alone due to the Eliminate, and it's very hard to push against him because he, you just take blast after blast, or you have to tower dive him under the tower. And Wisp and CK, they can just do that as soon as they, keep, they see the Keeper of the Light trying to defend a tower solo. Well, that's uh, the signal for Wisp's Chaos Knight to just relocate behind his ass and pound his to uh, pound his face to oblivion. So, um, it looks like a Pacific. They weren't prepared for that. They are taking a lot of time to decide what to pick next. And um, one thing that is good about Keeper of the Light is that he can recall uh, allies heroes at level six. So that recall ability is going to uh, uh, allow them to save uh, some of those uh, heroes that are getting ganked. Uh, Wisp CK, you know Wisp when he used the relocate, there's a symbol on the minimap showing that he will relocate. So if your hero is actually fast enough, you are uh, you have the time to just try to run away and 
as long as you don't take any damage from heroes for that 4, 5, 6 second, I don't remember, uh, uh, recalls duration, you will be brought back to Keeper of Light and Chaos Knight will, will just have lost their time. Enigma and Zven are going to be the picks here. So it's not going to be a PL, it's going to be the big cleave combo with the Zven Enigma. And the Keeper of Light providing Zven the early, early, uh, you know, laning, uh, power because of the stun into the illuminate this is a lot of damage and Sven is also a hero that is often mana stars due to the fact that his um, storm bolt is 140 mana and his mana pool is something like 200 at level 1 so that means he stu he throws one stuns away and that's pretty much it he can't really stun for at least two or three minutes keeper light is gonna make this a little bit simpler for Sven and Zven stun is a very very powerful stun. So whenever you have Rubik, for example, Zven stun is always, always pr almost uh, necessary to steal because it's so good. And Tinker is going to be the answer here. Oh, sorry. Tinker here is going to be the answer. Uh, Tinker with Chaos Knight. Of course, this is a global lineup in the making. Tinker who can absolutely uh, you know just TP. Onto a hero, uh, onto a creep, and then having the Wisp Chaos Knight coming in, and he can well basically Chaos Knight Wisp they, they go in first, and Tinker gets uh, some seconds to come in afterwards on the uh, on the on the creep with the Boots of Travel, and he will be able to provide Wisp C Cave support if ever things will go wrong by laying down Mars of the Machines, so Chaos Knight Wisp can just run back to the Mars of the Machine area, and if you want to chase into that, you're you have to be prepared to take a lot of damage. So, of course, Darks are now banned. They want to avoid having Zven Enigma uh, getting even more combination that can help the Zven to deal massive damage. Of course, Darks here, one of those heroes who can use the vacuum to make an easier time for Enigma to use a black hole and to have everyone getting stunned by the Zven, uh, you know, Stormbolt, as well as giving him free reign over the enemy team when he's using Cleave. Uh, he also has the Iron Shell, which helps Sven in the early game to deal damage, and the Wolf Replica, which remaining. is one of the best team fight spell in the late game, due to the Five fact that remaining. the stronger your your hero is, and the stronger your illusions will be as well. So that means uh, if you have a very very powerful and buffed out Sven, uh, he, the illusion will be killing your supports. Now Sven is not a very good uh, illusion target for the wall. Uh, this is due to the fact that the illusions only take the damage from the stats and Sven, most of his damage comes from items such as Daedalus, uh, you know, raw attack speed items such as the Mask of Madness and the skills you have such as God's Strength that the illusions don't have. So, Chaos Knight though, a fairly good bet because he usually goes for the drums as well as the armlet and a Herd of Thrask, so that means his illusion will be quite beefy. And the Wolf Replica is going to do a whole lot of work against him. Shadow Demon as well as the Bounty Hunter is going to get banned. So Bounty Hunter, of course, a very good addition to this lineup. It's a face rush lineup. Use the track, Chaos Knight Wisp already very fast. And with the track bonus, they will be moving with haste all the time. Plus, with those uh, high kill potential heroes, you will get a lot of gold rolling remaining. through the track kills. And you also can scout around with the Bounty Five Hunter to provide remaining. vision for Wisp CK to TP in. And Shadow Demon, one of the better uh, counters to Sven as well. He cannot purge the Sven's uh, ultimate. Nothing can purge his God Strength anymore because it used to be the case long time ago and Sven was just useless. Uh, he would use the ultimate, someone would purge him and he would be like, okay, so there goes my ultimate, I guess. And uh, it's not like uh, Broodmother, his ultimate's cooldown is not that low, so it's not even like he can shrug it off and just use the ultimate 20 seconds later. PL is still gonna get banned, so they are... They are aware of that uh, possibility. They might say that, you know, you, we may see a Sven support. That can happen. Uh, we don't want to get uh, caught by surprise by a last PL pick. So, PL is going to get thrown out of the window. Shadow Demon, I was saying, very good against Sven because of the purge that goes through BKB. So, that means even if Sven pops the BKB purge on him, he will be very, very slow. And it's going to be very hard for him to just reach his, enemy, his targets. Uh, and on the other side, we have a Invoker Band, which is very good against heroes like the Wisp CK, uh, due to the fact that Chaos Knight really needs a lot of mana for his uh, combo and has a very low mana pool. So, w Tornado EMP landing on Chaos Knight Wisp means that Chaos Knight will be. Oh, Warlock pick! 
This is delightful. Warlock has been picked, you know, quite a few times lately. Uh, one example would be the Warlock Spectre game. I I think it was Team Liquid playing that. I'm not really sure. Or no tide under. So, Warlock here. I'm very excited to see how it's gonna work out. I hope it's not gonna be a Warlock support, like fully support. Warlock is a support hero, but he needs levels. He really needs at level six and. That's gonna be interesting. That's gonna be very interesting. I hope we're gonna see some very good move, some very good combination by this Warlock. And Rubik is gonna be the pick immediately after. They know that the Warlock ultimate is very good. Rubik will be looking to steal that one, but Warlock, remember this guy, uh, the the uh, ultimate, the Golem, stun a huge AoE. It's like insane. Warlock back in 2004, 5, 6, I don't really remember. Uh, I was playing that long time ago in Dota 1 in the competitive uh, French scene and he was basically picked as a counter pick to any hero like the Sand King or like the Enigma because you can channel your epicenter from miles away and Warlock would just drop the, the uh, stone on your head and you will be looking very stupid because well that also goes for BKB so no matter Shadow Fiend if he has BKB and is going into an epileptic trance uh, the rock in the face, and it's gonna be a nature spark fight. So, going fully global, except for the warlock, uh, I can't really see another uh, global hero, except for maybe Zeus or Spectre. And I would be very surprised, and I would be very, very happy if I saw Zeus, but that's very unlikely to happen anyway. Um, so we have a um, Nature's Prophet with the TP, Tinker with the Boost of Travel, Chaos Knight, and Wisp with the Relocate. And also, you have to remember the fact that. Um, even if you don't have any creeps around Everybody gets set. for the Tinker to TP on, you have the Nature's Prophet able to create a uh, trance. So, okay, sorry, my mouse was uh, bugging a bit, but now it's fixed. We have Johnny on the Warlock, Kyo on the Chaos Knight. We have Chains, of course, in the solo mid, Tinker, or it seems like it. Is he gonna go solo mid? It looks like he's heading for a bottle, so it's very probably going to be the solo mid Tinker. Wisp going to be played by uh, Zero Four, and we have Risk, Risk, X player of N9, and N9 being of course the old Absolute Legend team, gonna play the Nature's Prophet and looking to go for the top lane because he has consumables. So usually Dangerous Prophet doesn't take any consumables except go. for Clarity if he goes to jungle. Uh, Lenin Demon on the other side is going to be play the Enigma. We have uh, Nyekers on the Keeper of Light, K uh, KRR on the Rubik, it's Nikos on Sven and on the top lane is going to be Question Mark playing the Shadow Fiend, so unknown. We have wards going down already, Radiant wards here for aggressive uh, warding, making sure that the this uh, trial lane, aggressive trial lane for uh, the Dire side, making sure that they have the vision over what's going to happen here and the Dire side, putting down a very common ward to spot the uh, the rune I spot. For this one. Wisp might be. What is he doing? He's. Oh, okay. So they are putting the Wisp CK in the middle lane, of course. Chain is going to be in the bottom instead, supported by Johnny, and Johnny has to be very careful here, and. In fact, this lane will have to be extremely careful because they have no disable. Tinker has no disable, and Warlock has no disable. So it's all going to come down to chains not dying here. Most of the machine is very good to deny your enemy from going in due to the fact that it deals good damage. But that's two very squishy heroes. So if they get caught, that's going to be the end of Tinker or Warlock. And you see that the Illuminate is already going to start spamming onto chains. Chains only has three tangos, not only two. And we're gonna open up the last of the nice tab. The middle lane should be a clear win for the Chaos Knight. Uh, Enigma, he is not a very, very, uh, you know, s strong hero uh, as so far as the uh, HP goes. And that means if he gets comboed, he is gonna go down. And here comes the first um, brought back and two second stun. That is gonna be the death of this Enigma. Kind of a lucky stun, usually you see... Oh, more so the machine! You see Rubik taking lots of damage and Sven as well. What's happening on this bottom lane? This trial lane should never ever be so pressured by those two heroes. Chains, I must say, should have 
Um, he probably dealt a lot of uh, damage through right clicks because then soul on health that's not something that's supposed to happen there's no spell no burst damage uh, the only thing is the shadow word from the warlock which is going to be a huge help for tinker as well uh, because they will be able to sustain in this lane and sustainability in this lane is going to be not key should i say because the problem of this lane is a killer lane if you get caught stun stun uh stun stun burst and laser it's it's probably going to be your death so you chains, even though chains and warlock are off to a good start, if they get caught, it's gonna be finished for them. But it looks like chains right now, just controlling that lane, getting all those last hits. You see that he's at six for zero on an offensive trial lane versus a dual lane. Not only that, but he's harassing at the same time, and he has the boots already, so he has more mobility than the others. And Johnny as well, doing a very good job at harassing. On the top lane, what's happening? We have risk going solo against the Shadowfin. Uh, Risk is in fact beating the Shadow Fiend. 9 for 4 and Shadow Fiend only 6 for 3. Risk doing a very good job at it and well he's missing some few creep kills here as well. Enigma is trying to block his creep. He is not having a good time. All three lanes right now are going the way of Mighty who are sh showing to be a very strong team. Enigma in the middle lane should be very strong due to the fact that he has the Eidolons and that allows him to have way more damage and um, you know lane control than his enemy. More damage, more right click damage, more deny, more last hit uh, due to that, and more harassment power. But Chaos Knight and Wisp, again, as I said, this is all coming down to the um, burst damage, and Enigma doesn't really withstand burst damage very well. Nico always taking some harassment damage from the Warlock. Warlock going for the Max Shadow Word. This is old school, man. It's like Shadow Word. Usually, we used to see the Warlock going for Shadow Word stats because. He had such a good animation and such a good uh, attack damage that he could just pretty much solo lane and beat any other solo laner due to the Shadow Ward Harass or Heal. That's a very versatile skill and the stats with the animation for the right clicks. But nowadays, Fatal Bounds have received a huge buff and it deals 20% extra damage to all the other heroes, uh, all the other units. Instead of just 5%, Chain is going to get caught here, but the Marcel Machine is already late. Chain is taking too much damage, is he going to go down? He's still surviving, the Shadow Ward really making it work. Few HP left on this, uh, on this poor Tinker, but Tinker survived and that is all, that is the key. As long as you survive, there's no problem. It's not a question of living with 2 health or 200 health, it's a question of are you dead or are you alive. And now, Nico is forced to pop a Clarity Potion, Rubik as well, and Rubik just, you see how much damage he took from that exchange. Keeper of Light as well, they will have to be careful. Nyekers is holding on to his Chakra Magic, I'm not really sure why. He should be really spamming that shit because, well, it's it's free mana going for anyone. Johnny is going to be finding this uh, regeneration rune, and you see Chain's already almost up to full health due to Shadow Word from the uh, Warlock, and that's... That's smoke gang coming in, but Rubik is low on health. And Rubik is gonna find Johnny, but what can he really do? He wasn't in range for telekinesis, and Wisp is missing, so that means Wisp, both of those spirits, oh, he went for 1 1 1 build. The spirit for Wisp, if he maxes them, it's a lot of damage as well. It's level 1, 125 damage if all the spirit hits, and uh, level 2, it's already 250 damage, and it goes up and up and up and up, so. In the late game, the spirit bombs really deal a lot. It's 100 damage times 5, so that's 500 potential damage. So, rotation to the middle lane, but uh, not really sure what they're trying to accomplish. I think they just see that this bottom lane is not working out, so they want the farm on the Sven because he's the carry uh, with the Shadow Fiend, but it's not working out. And Sven, with this trial lane, should be okay to farm in the middle lane. I'm not even sure of that, because Chaos Knight Wisp, they are level 5 and 3, and Sven, look at this guy, so low on health, and they even want to dive this, no, uh, Chaos Knight is going to decide against it, deeming that not safe, and this is the first time I see a trial lane getting beat by a dual lane, Chain and Johnny, those two guys really doing work, and Warlock even getting one point in upheaval, so... Experimenting stuff, it's not going to be maxing out the Fatal Bounce. So usually nowadays you see Warlock going for the max Fatal Bounce because it's just so annoying to play against. He has no range limit, that means even if you TP back to the Fountain, uh, you will take damage. Even if you're running away, you will take damage and that's very annoying. So, 
it's going to be upheaval instead. That means they want to force the enemy to stay in the march of the machine area, and that actually can be very, very huge. Uh, you basically throw down the the um, the golems, and you put down the upheaval. Chain will just go and use the march of the machine again and again, and you won't be able to escape anywhere. The worst part if, is if those those two guys actually put this uh, march of the machine, for example, there, and the chaos knight just caught your allies there. So that means you have to be basically forced to either ignore your help, uh, your ally and just go away and uh, let him get killed or you have to march into the march of the machine and that's not going to work out. So 36 for 23 in the middle lane. Uh, Shadow Fiend now of course getting the upper hand on this uh, Nature's Prophet because he's getting the levels and with the levels he's getting the souls and with the souls he's getting the damage and now you see that he's sitting at Radiant almost 120 damage per hit whereas Nature's Prophet is only at 70 and they are looking to go in it is a stun going on to Sven 3 seconds in but they are hesitating and it looks like they don't want to go in Kyo is still gonna... oh they are a bit too hesitant they didn't decide and they could have gotten the kill here but Going back and forth and back and forth again, not gonna work out for them. Chain though, oh, Chain has uh, back to the fountain because it's a 7 minute 50 second Tinker March of the Machine boost of travel and that is going to be a huge pain now for Pacific because this Tinker will be present everywhere if needed be. Chain doesn't even, you know, spam his uh, mana on the March of the Machine, He's just gonna use his last hits because he he is getting those last hits. 38 creep kills. And you see chains, uh, no not chains, but uh, question mark is actually at 41. So we have a Tinker just going toe to toe against a Shadow Fiend in terms of creep kills. Considering that the Tinker was against the tri lane and Shadow Fiend was in the solo lane. So we see Enigma. He has a level 6. He's going for the mechanism and they will need that heal especially when those TP uh, from the wisp will start to happen Chaos Knight's up to level 7 already and he almost has the dream finished Risk on the other hand is level 6 only and uh, Shadow Fiend is level 8 so Shadow Fiend now winning this top lane pretty convincingly but that's to be expected and uh, Wisp I'm, I'm just a bit concerned because Wisp doesn't have the level 6 yet and the sooner he gets to level 6, oh, they are gonna go on Sven, Sven, only 2 seconds done, and the, he will get brought back by the Rubik, trying to help, but that is probably a very dead Rubik, 4 seconds done, Chain is gonna steal that kill with the rocket, and 0-4 has to be careful because the tower is just going on him. March of the Machine is gonna get used, and it's gonna be risk tanking that tower because why not Mighty just show that they don't they don't fear tower aggro and TPing away so just putting up the trends to help damage down the tower 04 is forced back due to an illuminate blast and it's gonna be the end of that little push Johnny on the other hand he's getting the levels now on the bottom lane and he went for a second level in the fatal bounce he's level 6 in like one or two creep kills and once he has this level 6 this this uh, death ball is gonna look very, very scary. Regen rune in the bottom lane. The Wisp is gonna try to get that. And it doesn't look like the Radiant, the Dire Side will try to contest that. Bottom lane. Chain's coming back to form. And he maxed out the Heat Seeking Missile now. He's looking to be more active on this uh, map. Gonna rearm. He has a Soul Ring. So he has pretty much a free rearm. The thing with the soul ring is that it is gonna get rearm with the uh, with the ultimate. So soul ring provides 150 mana. Rearm costs 150 mana. So you're basically trading 150 health for a free cooldown on all your items and uh, skills. You see that chain, and whenever he TP's away, he still has 400 h uh, 400 mana. If necessary, he can still launches a heat miss uh, hit seeking missile, and probably a rearm before using soul ring and throwing out again a heat seeking missile. So chain's now going for a top lane, and they might be looking to get a kill onto shadow fiend. Relocate might be used, and here comes the relocate. That is a very dead shadow fiend, and very nice play by risk. Sending up the trends from the backside to take the tower aggro to avoid having the Wisp or the Chaos Knight taking too much damage from the tower. That is a very, very nice play, and that 
is very often just not seen by anyone. Risk here, nicely done. Wish more profit players would do that when uh, they are actually waiting for a tower dive. But Risk, it's his turn to, to get the uh, gank now. We see Nature Profit. Uh, Enigma is here, but he's just gonna wait until the. Oh, 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 there is a black hole. It's gonna get popped for the kill on the Nature Prophet. Uh, not really too much problem though, because it is a kill after all, and a kill is a kill. Risk didn't try to use the Sprout there. Kinda surprised. I'm not really sure he could have survived anyway, but it could have been worth a try. The stun was out, the uh, Illuminate was out, the Enigmas, Malphys was out, so no AoE damage anymore. And what do we see? So middle lane, Chaos Knight picks up this uh, tower. And Johnny as well as Chains, so let's just look, gonna look to push down this bottom tower. But with only Tinker and Warlock, the push is not gonna be that, that scary. Doesn't really do a whole lot. Risk is gonna TP though, and Risk is the guy who's gonna be able to push this tower with the Trends uh, basically tanking the tower. Nature's Prophet almost up to a mechanism as well. And um, I'm not even sure if the Dara wanted to defend that, they could. Oh, we see a little drawn here, a little drawing here going on this tower. Johnny is going very far in for the Observer Ward, but he knows everyone's there, he's not scared. Chained as well is not really scared, can't really get picked up by anyone at the moment. And he's gonna lay out the march of the machines, the rock is gonna fly in as well, it's gonna hit onto the Enigma. And in fact, Chaos Knight bringing the Rubik over the cliff and he's gonna get on the bottom side of the cliff. Mighty crushing up that Pacific lineup, and that is brutal. Warlock didn't even have to use his chaotic offering yet. The big rocks haven't yet fall, uh, fell from the sky. So, probably gonna look for the top lane now. Ping on the tower, that's their next target. Chaos Knight is uh, running towards the top lane. And with that power, uh, with that power tread as well as drum plus the tether, you see 475 movement speed. That's almost haste. It's 50 movement speed away from haste. The rune, unluckily, is going to spawn bottom, and it's going to be Johnny taking that illusion rune with his warlock, and he's going straight for an Aghanim scepter. It looks like point boosters picked up, and even if he doesn't go for Aghanim, uh, a casual point booster is very good. It gives him health as well as mana. So he has more to spam and also he doesn't go down immediately before he uses the golem if he gets like, you know, caught up. So I'm, I'm not really sure I would have expected him for uh, to go for the arcane boots to provide his ally, uh, ally a bit more mana. Chaos Knight doesn't have it. Uh, Wisp, of course, doesn't have the... No, he doesn't have any boots yet. And uh, Nature's Prophet, power, not, no, it's not even power trade at the moment. TB coming in, double TB coming in, March of the Machine laid out by the Tinker, stun onto the Chaos Knight, but look at that! We have Enigma melting down to that, and now they are just turning around, Sven goes down, Nyakers is in a lot of trouble, he won't be able to run away, Tinker, uh, the, uh, Rubik also went down to the Tinker's March of the Machine Rockettes, and now they are chasing onto Shadowfiend. Shadowfiend has a Blink Dagger, he should be okay to get away. Oh, we see TP Gun coming from uh, Risk, and Risk is going to give his allies a few seconds. That's going to be just enough for Shadowfiend to get picked up by the rest of the team, and this is good by Shadowfiend. Johnny even coming in with that uh, Fatal Bones Max on the Tinker, gets a Blink Dagger, and that's... That, my friend, is a very, very nice movement by Mighty and a very big mistake by Pacific thinking that they could take the fight under the Mars of the Machine. Those two supports didn't last as, like, they didn't last 10 seconds under that uh, tower, um, not the tower, but under the Mars of the Machine. Rubik even dying just to the rockets, uh, uh, rockets as well as the Mars of the Machine. Trends are gonna get summoned and this is gonna be another push. There's nothing this one can do. He doesn't even have a power trades yet. Rubik has a pretty sure it's magic stick. Tower. What do we have? We have Keeper of Light with nothing but boots. And Enigma has the mechanism, but that's not gonna be enough. Shadow Fiend has gone for straight blink dagger, but where is his survivability? Where is his BKB? He can't really go in against this CK lineup. Because even if he goes into this uh break dancing of his with the um Oh, Malif oh, relocate, 
and Enigma. Sir, you're dead. Even risk coming in. Nature's Prophet going for Midas after his mechanism, and this game looks to be in the bag. Too much domination. Net worth, Chaos Knights 7.8k, Chains on the Tinker 7.3k, Risk 5.5k, and then only Shadow Fiend at 4.2k. Even the Wisp has almost as much farm as the Shadow Fiend right now. And we still haven't seen the Warlock using Ultimate. So, all of this, they're winning 11 to 1 without having Warlock doing anything. He just comes in after the fight. And uh, don't get me wrong, Johnny did very well in the bottom lane, protecting uh, and helping the chains to get his uh, items. But right now, all those kills we have seen, Warlock wasn't in it. Or he was there at the very end, just using a Fatal Bone, because why the hell not. And Chaos Knight decides to go for a BKB, so they want to go for the Juggler. They want to finish that, and they are going to go straight in with this BKB drum. Warlock is, in fact, rushing the Aghanim Scepter. And Wisp... Earn of Shadow, Tranquil Boots, Soul Ring, all the mana providing uh, items for the Chaos Knight. Tinker is just gonna blink into the trees and go away. And the tower goes down, that's already all the auto towers down for the dark side. It's not even 18 minutes in the game and they are gonna go for Roshan now. They just control everything. There's nothing the dark side can do. They only have one ward and it is right there. There's a TP in coming. It is gonna be a relocate. Nature Prophet coming in. Sven is gonna get killed. Sven doesn't even have the time to do anything. Throwing a stun or whatever. No. He is gonna go down. And they just can't do no do anything right now. Except for 5 manning. Because as soon as one guy appears on the map. And there's no allies with him. It's gonna be double TP. Or if not triple TP, and that's going to be a kill. So, so now they pick up the Sven, they are going to feel confident to go on Roshan. And even if they wanted to go onto Roshan, it would be a very obvious smoke gank because all the lanes are pushing right now. So that means if they're not defending at the towers, well, the Radiant side will know where they are. Ma namely, trying to get Roshan. Trying to defend Roshan, but... Roshan is going to go down and that's there's nothing they can do about it. K KRR, I'm not even sure what he's doing right now. He's going to get solo killed by this Tinker. Went for a Dagon, that's a Ohio build with a Blink, Dagon, Tinker. And are we going to see Ethereal Blade going afterwards? Or is there even going to be enough time for it? It's probably not. One with Stone by Mighty, this team that no one knew before are just looking terribly strong. And I'm not even sure it's, if it's because of the, uh, you know, it's sometimes we see teams going doing very, very well oh, due to their team play. But down. there, it's just individual skill. Chaos Knight, Wisp, those two guys have been doing perfect. The Tinker has been just crapping all over the bottom lane. Johnny has been supporting very well. And Risk, well, he has done his job on the top lane. And now he's just very, very annoying in any team fight. He just comes in. He uses the Sprout to avoid you running away. And now he's going to have even more love on Sprout, so it's going to be delaying the enemies even more. Uh, that is if he levels it. Yeah, he does level it. And that Tinker, that Tinker, man. Dagon level 2 already. He's gonna come back in, and he's gonna keep pushing. Martha's machine laying out. Yaker's gonna just run in it and get killed. Blink incoming. Oh, not gonna use the uh, blink. And now, oh, 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 Kyo is actually caught here. But here comes the big golem, big, big angry rock. And they are gonna pick down this enigma, as well as the Rubik. Rubik. Not gonna be able to escape that one. Kyo with the BKB just going in. And Risk is gonna cancel that Shadow Fiend's ultimate. El Shadow Fiend spending so much time trying to. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. In the end, Wisp still dies due to the uh, passive of the ultimate of the Shadow Fiend. But they call GG. They already call GG. They see that they're just getting outmatched, and that's. That's the story of that game. They just got outplayed in all the three yeah, lanes. Mid -tower could use a well, top lane was still going pretty okay, but middle lane it was a 
Now, top lane, it wasn't going okay. It was a wash. He... What kind of music is that for ages now? That's kind of a weird new music. It's almost a uh, cliche or... So Nature's Prophet also went for Dagon now. It's pretty much over by that point. Johnny has the uh, Aghanim Scepter flying up to him. Yep, that is his Aghanim. That will be double, double the trouble chaotic offering. And the Chaos Knight's Illusion are just gonna pound down the towers. And the others, <laughs> Pacific, are just gonna hide on the secret shop, not the secret shop, the side shop on this top lane. Question mark. And no one is just gonna hide in those trees. And the only one defending for honor is going to be this Rubik. Oh, so we see pings going on. Do they know they're here? Tinker just farming with Dagon. Cause why the hell not after all? He doesn't really mind anymore at that point. Dyer's bottom towers getting the business. Tinker still pushing up that top lane as well. And this is gonna be a, a little bit of a slow end. Yeah, do something about that bo Dyer's bottom tower got blown to bits. Rack's gonna go down as well, and we're gonna go into the next game. Mighty. Yeah, yeah, Pacific lost. Kinda. 17 for 2. So, yeah. And. Wisp is gonna go in the enemy. Oh, oh, zero four. Why did you kill your poor warlock? Why did you do that? KRR and a bit of trouble. It's gonna break right down. One hit and he goes down. Now Enigma is gonna be forced to pop the BKB, uh, plug the black hole. I mean, but he doesn't want to do so. In fact, it's not that he doesn't want to do so. It's because he had the cooldown. <laughs> And there we go. Mighty looking very, very strong. And I must say, we'll have to see if uh, they can get to that semifinals or even finals of the Ghost Cup Asia. And how will they fare against the best teams? Dyer's mid tower is nothing now. It's heating up at the Dyer side. So Tinker got a Mask of Madness because why the fuck not? Six in a row. It's sundown. And let's take a look at the scoreboard. 9011211609. Woof! One of those three kills was even a tower and fountain kill by the wisp trawling around. Enigma blinks in to try to get the last black hole, but he gets stunned by the tether. So thank you guys for watching and keep, stay tuned. We're gonna jump into the next game as soon as this actually, uh, the other team actually gets there.